And for the strength conditioning coaches listening in, uh, like you mentioned, they do some mentoring. Um, what do you think sort of coaching excellence looks like? What What is sort of the key areas that you think coaches want to uh, grasp early on in their career, sort of the, the foundations, I guess, to be a great coach? Well, the number one thing without any hesitation is it's not all about us. It's about the athletes we coach. So coaching excellence is a real clear understanding what our role and task is, which is to develop the potential or maximise the potential or the capability or the capacity of those people that are putting their faith in us. Um, we, we are endeavouring as coaches to do everything we can to make the, those people we're working with better. So what would be the, the key cues, I guess, for someone to re maybe reflect on themselves and realise, well, maybe I, I am controlling a bit too much and I need to delegate a little bit more and, and approach sort of the systems-based thinking? A really basic thing is to, to see where you spend your time. <laughs> like um, there's a thing called the the Eisenhower matrix um, and many of the many of your audience I know that follow your show um, really well informed, well educated people, and they would probably know the Eisenhower matrix. But to get to the point, you know, um, it's the time frame that you have to work in and the importance you place on things. So there could be something really important and um, you've got to get stuck into it right now, or there's something that's really important and it's visionary and down the line. How have you sort of developed? that aspect, I guess, of critical thinking, um, whether, yeah, to improve efficiency or effectiveness of, of anything, any of your sort of systems? Um, yeah. Well, I think, I think the thing that's missing in, in the banner of critical thinking is reflection and reviewing. Um, that is critical thinking. And unless you reflect and review uh, deeply, uh, you're not even probably in the critical thinking process. So I, I think I think reflection and review is the inherent foundation of critical thinking. But to do that, I think you really need to be clear on what it is you're trying to achieve. Um, so that has so many layers to it, and I'm not. Uh, so so you really need to have look. This this is what I'm trying to do here, then the next step in critical thinking is what are the measures of success? Like what, what actually is the measure of success that, that I'm trying to achieve? What, what does that sort of look like uh, for perhaps some coaches that are listening in that want your expertise? Is that, you know, coming and speaking to the, the key stakeholders? Is it working with the players? Uh, or is it purely staff? I like Take us through a little bit of... Um, yeah, um, well, it's a, it's it's a it's a bit a bit of everything. So I guess the starting point always is behaviours. So if there's a concern, okay, what are the behaviours that are concerning? Well, like articulate them, right? What 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 is it that you're seeing um, that is causing you worry? Then once you see that, uh, I guess that's where my own, then I go to my toolbox and go, okay, which tools can I pull out here to help uh, redefine, lead and guide a different path to address those behaviours? Is there anything on, on this topic in terms of system-based thinking um, that we haven't touched on that you think... Um... That we should, or that you know, the listeners will, will enjoy. Um, Jack, if I was to sum it up, what's it all about? I think that's probably the, the best thing. Um, what what we try and do with coaching, and what we try and do with critical thinking, is four four key things. It's actually an acronym. I use acronyms a lot, and and the acronym is CARDS, C A R D S. And everything we do is about C for clarity. We, we're gonna, we've got to put in 
our processes for clarity. The A is for alignment. Because once we have clarity, then we need to align everyone involved. And if we're all clear and we're all aligned, it goes a long way to success. The R is for relationships because when you have great relationships with people, you'll find it easier to attain clarity and alignment because I can talk to you about it and I'm not going to offend you. You're not going to be defensive. I understand where you're coming from. You're going to understand where I'm coming from. We have such a great relationship that we can be open and honest with each other. The D stands for discipline, and that is the discipline to stick to the plan, the discipline to hold people to account, the discipline to reflect and review because you said that's what you would do, the discipline to be a high-performing athlete, and there's so many realms of it. So clarity, alignment, relationships, and discipline. And then the S is the thing that ties it all together, which is systems.